Hello everybody. I just made a video about the Unseen World and this video is a little bit of a continuation of that. I would like to speak about integrity in the Unseen World. And also, this is about the first resurrection. The Bible really talks about a first resurrection. They talk about two resurrections, but the first one is the resurrection that we all really, really, really want to grab a hold of and to be a part of. Um, you know, it is the most blessed place. It's where we're ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. And, you know, we see Jesus in the Bible uh, on, a, on a wonderful stallion with a two-edged sword coming from his mouth. And we can assume that that is his message and that is his word going forth. And this is making him a conquering king of kinds. So those of us who make it to the first resurrection are those indeed who probably are the same. You know, are those people who really, really managed beyond all the tests and all the trials to actually really, really end up with a message that we have successfully displayed in the area that we are given with the public that we've been given but also uh, in the unseen world because that is incredibly important that's probably the most important place to have a good reputation because that's who you really are so i really wanted to talk about people who are actually running their race right now there are lots and lots of people out there who are running various different kinds of races they grab for themselves different aspects of the Word of God or just things that they feel passionate about. They really want to, you know, they really want to change in the world. And so they're running a race trying to really make those things a reality. Now, human beings very often assume that the only thing that really matters is what we say. You know, we, we preach a word and we expect everyone to go, wow, that was like really amazing. And, you know, I, I you know, even if it is the most insightful, intelligent thing that anybody has ever heard or ever said or will ever say again, the only thing that matters is what people are seeing in the unseen world and that there is real, real clout to that message. Now, anybody who is running a race and since I, as I said, there are many people who are running races right now. You could say that pretty much any minister who is actively behind the pulpit, you could say that any person who is trying to live out any aspect of the Bible is indeed a minister and they're, they're running that race. Those people can unfortunately have a tendency to really fight with each other and to really compete with each other. And this is really, 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 really unfortunate because, um, because that's the that's the best way to get knocked out of the race is to really compete with each other. So it is a real, it's a real shame when that happens. But but it's it's a very big it's a very big thing. But what's ironic too is that the more we help other people win their races the more we are given integrity in the unseen world. The more people really see our message as being true. So if one person who's running one race is bumping up against another person who's also running their own race, if they come together and they work together in unity and love and fellowship, this is when tremendous power is released. This is when tremendous... Um, uh, how can I say when you, you know real influence on the people who are watching because I think that that's really what it's all about you know it's really about loving especially the people who are involved in the race you know the a message isn't much good if it doesn't involve love on some level so showing and displaying love is just a tremendous a tremendous um, powerful tool to really make our message come across so I really believe that as we go along and as we run into people who are running their race, you know, if we have the tendency to sort of kick down the competition or the other people who are also running to, to win the prize, which is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and revival, really, 
uh, if we're so busy knocking those people down, um, the less integrity we have and the less possibility we are ever going to actually have to making it on our own. So, um, but any, but helping somebody else will also do it. Uh, but then of course it goes right back again to your own personal message. You know, if your personal message is that, you know, you should love and respect homeless women, you know, and you're telling everybody to go help a homeless woman and go, go get her off the streets and give her some clothes and give her some food and God sends a homeless lady to you and you just kind of rebuff her and treat her badly because she's a homeless lady and you're looking down on homeless ladies, you're going to lose all the respect that you possibly could have gained in the unseen world. The same thing with if your ministry is to help missionaries. You know, if God sends you a missionary to take care of and you didn't take care of them, um, then, you know, your message fails. It falters. It falls through the floor. Um, same thing with any other ministry that we might take part of. You know, God will find a really testing person to send your way right at the end of your race when you're very, very tired and you're exhausted and you don't think you can take another step and you just have to push through just a little bit extra much. And when and if you do, that's what really gives power to your message. And as I said, you know, I, I remember uh, listening to a story from Jackie Pullinger you know, uh, she talked about this really strange phenomenon in her own ministry. You know, Jackie Pullinger was a lady who ran off to China to be a missionary. She helped pray lots and lots of men off of drugs. She helped a lot of prostitutes. She helped a lot of people. And as she helped them, she noticed a weird snowball effect where in the beginning it was quite hard. But as time went on, it went it just came easier and easier and easier and there was also this really strange occasion where uh, her program or some talk that she had given was played on um, a TV program and it was played in a jail I think some kind of a recruit you know some kind of center with men who were in prison and I guess the whole prison became saved after seeing her and her program and how do you explain that? Well, you could just say that the her, you know, her authority became stronger and stronger and stronger. But actually, you know, her authority really was about her integrity in the unseen world. You know, when they heard the message, they saw in that unseen world her helping countless of men who were on drugs or having troubles. And as soon as they saw that, they were incredibly impressed and they gave their life over to Christ. And that's really what it's all about. So we have a tremendous, um, tremendous, tremendous job in front of us. Not just to run our own race, but becoming our message. But also to help those around us to really to win their own prizes. And the more we try to trip other people up because of our own personal ambition, the harder it gets for ourselves. Um, but the prize is, of course, the most coveted, desirable thing of all which is to be part of the first resurrection and to rule and reign with Jesus Christ and to be having you know that legacy of that message on earth and those people who are who are still on earth you know it's something that really really works and really shows God and really does incredible things so we have a lot of responsibility we have a lot of um, um, responsibility to ourselves to the messages that we choose and also to the messages that others are carrying and as I said the more we actually help other people the more uh, authority and the more integrity we develop in the unseen world so I don't know if you've ever ran across a person who promised something uh, and of course all of us can drop the ball all of us can promise something and not do it but if you've ever ran into a person who said they were going to do something and they don't do it and they don't do it and they don't do it over and over and over and over again, ultimately what you end up with is you lose integrity, not just with that person, but anybody who comes across you will just see, like, that's a person I can't trust and I can't 
quite figure out why I can't trust them, but I can't trust them. So, and before clicking this off, even though it's a little bit of a side note, I thought that I would also speak about our words and the power of our words. Because if we're running across people and we're really truly speaking badly about them and we're tearing them down and we're seeing the worst in them, we're really trying to ruin their message. If we're trying to cause them to trip up, we're trying to ruin their message. And if their message is truly good and is truly a godly message and it's truly from Christ, then you're subverting his kingdom, his message, and his rule and his reign and the lives of people. So you're actually sort of sabotaging the authority of Jesus Christ. So, important points. Be careful about what you say. Try really, really hard to live out your message. Help other people live out their messages. The more you do, the more you're going to see a revival break out. You're going to see people turn to Christ. You're going to see tremendous blessing and fruit coming out. But the more ambition that's seen in the people of God, the more you're going to absolutely see people and society grow colder and colder, worse and worse, meaner and meaner, and more and more ambitious. So it's a big responsibility. And then of course we lose the ultimate prize, which is Jesus Christ. 